Hi everyone, welcome back to Harry John's YouTube channel and Harry John's kitchen again today. So I had a lot of people asking uh, how to bottle wine after you've brewed it all. Um, now I thought this was a pretty simple step, I didn't feel that I, it was worthy of a video but you guys have asked so I shall do it. So I'm going to show you the equipment you need to bottle up any wine um, or even cider, it's the same kind of process, just no corks, just screw on lids. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Alright, so here's all the equipment we're going to need today. Uh, hopefully I can just about get it in the um, picture frame. Alright, so which should I start with? So today anyway, we're only going to be bottling three bottles of wine. Partly because I'm low on bottles, but more so I'm low on corks. So, not very organised of me, but we can make this work. I've already bottled up one bottle of this uh, around Christmas time. So, uh, we'll see how three gets on. I can run out today and get another one if I need to. Okay, so you're going to need um, a, a few, however many wine bottles you need to uh, bottle up however much uh, wine you've brewed. One demijohn will fill up six bottles so that should give you a rough estimate of how many you need. Um, this terrifying looking device is the corker. Now there are ways to do this, some people literally just uh, put a waste on top of a wine bottle with the cork on top. If you uh, literally have uh, no access to one of these devices then have a little look, there could be another way of doing it. This is very quick and simple. I bought a little kit second hand and this came with it and it is great. It's really fun to use. Um, so obviously we're going to be using a siphon tube and that's going to be taking the wine out of the demijohn into the wine bottles. Uh, and then this is an optional extra. Basically once you've corked the wines you can put these little bottle tops on top and uh, yeah, they look quite nice. It's it's going to be uh, quite random. I've got some labels. These are last year's wines that I made. Harry John's wines. I was quite proud of the labels. I gave them out as Christmas gifts. People love them. So you can see one of my previous videos I had a, a, a banana wine uh, which is people seem to love that video on YouTube. It's great. And I also did an apple and rhubarb. And this is apple from my granddad's tree and rhubarb from a plant at the bottom of our garden. Um, and it was really nice, so I was really surprised, so yeah, I'm kind of getting into uh, wine making now. Um, I'm more of a cider person, but this went down well. Okay, so as usual guys, make sure you sterilise your wine bottles or your tools, siphon tube. Make sure everything's as clean as possible, especially as I do everything organically. Um, this is the only kind of chemical I use. I don't use any Camden tablets, any Pectolase. Um, everything comes out great, but just make sure you start off with something nice and clean. Alright, and let's get going. Okay, so as you can see guys, I've cleaned up the worktop. Um, I've put the siphoning tube into the demijohn. Now, make sure that your tube does not touch the bottom of a demijohn. This is where the yeast cake develops. So you don't want to get this yeast cake into your final product. It's a really beautiful colour at the bottom of this uh, demijohn though. I do like that. That is cool. Alright so it's nice and secure. I've put a little clip on it so that the siphoning tube is not going to go any deeper into the demijohn. And we're going to start with the banana wine glass from last year. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to suck on this tube, the wine is going to come flowing out and when it gets about halfway, I'm going to put it into the top of this uh, wine wine bottle. Sorry. Um, one, for, one thing to remember is to make sure that your wine bottle is just below the surface that the demijohn's on. That just makes gravity do its work and pulls the liquid out of the demijohn and into the wine glass. Okay, so I'll do this one and then uh, we shall do the other okay. two. Okay, so all of the wine, well not all of it, sorry, there's still a little bit there that I've had to uh, put a fresh airlock on and I've got about another couple of bottles in there. So, yep, I'm going to have to go to the shops and sort that out. 
Okay, so I filled up these three wine bottles and I've left about, it's just over an inch. You basically want to leave enough room for this cork to go in. So I've left plenty there anyway, but I'd say, if you can get it to focus, if you can give it about an inch, that is perfect. So you just want to make sure that the cork isn't touching the wine. Won't be a problem, but it's best for it not to. All right, so you can see there, just enough room there. And I don't know if it's going to show up on the Prosecco bottle. See if I can get that to focus. No, not quite. There you go. So we're leaving just enough space for this cork to go in. And then we're going to go to our corking machine. You push it in there like that. And now what I find is put the wine bottles on the ground. So obviously this is red wine. So this can stain any carpets. But if you've got a tiled floor like ours, just put the wine bottles on the floor. And then with this machine, it's got two, oh, so I've got the strap caught there. It's got two handles at the bottom. I should put this the other way around actually. So it's got two handles, and when you pull the bigger handles at the side, these two little handles hold the top. So you can just press down and then pull the side handles down and they put the cork into the bottle. So I'll go ahead and do that for all three now. And I shall show you what it looks like when they're cork. So here we go. So all the corks are in. How do you get it to focus? Something like that, isn't it? That's it. Hopefully it stays. There we go. All the corks are in. So you can see there's enough uh, gap underneath the cork just so it separates the liquid from it. And you can even see it in the Prosecco bottle there as well. So that's it, that's all you really need to do. Now I do have these uh, toppers which do look very nice and I believe provide a little bit of additional uh, protection. <laughs> Might have to leave it for the Prosecco bottle. <laughs> Drink that one first. Um, I think they do offer a little bit of protection for the cork, obviously uh, depending how long you keep these for, over time the elements are going to affect uh, the cork, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just wood isn't it, soft wood, so it's, um, yeah, going to get damp and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you just for fun how to put these on but again as long as you store these in a nice dry place you shouldn't have any trouble with the corks as well. And before I do that I just want to show you, uh, I mean the sun's gone away now, just how clear this wine can actually be. Now I don't put any clearing pectolase or uh, pectic enzyme things like that in there, I just keep mine as organic as original as possible I just make sure I'm using a sterile uh, bottle everything's clean to start with and you can see I try to put my hand behind it as well these they're pretty much perfectly clear now could they get any clearer maybe but honestly I feel like that's just for looks and it's very good it tastes great it's organic I just love it. I just want to put that out there. Even my home brew shop guy, he said you don't have to use all the stuff. He just told me keep it all sterile, clean at the beginning, and you should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next step then. Uh, the final step, uh, and we're just going to put some of these on. Now the best way to do it as well is to use a heat gun. Um, I don't have a heat gun, I, I may look into getting one soon, um, but I'm going to show you an easy and uh, yeah safe way to do this without one. Okay, so be very careful with this step guys, um, I'm no professional so feel free to leave this bit out or get a heat gun, but a good way i found to do these uh, bottle toppers is to boil a pan of water and what we're going to do, I'm going to attempt this one-handed for the first one and <laughs> see how this goes, but use two hands at home. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to hold the uh, bottle topper on as tight and as snug as we can and we're going to dip it in so that the, bottle, the top of the bottle is facing downward. 
uh, and then we're going to slowly rotate it so we get as nice, as smooth a finish on that bottle topper as we can. Okay, so here it goes, one handed guys. Let's see if I can do this well. So here we go. There we go. That's all you need. And now just keep stirring it, and you can see the sides coming down nicely. So I'm going to take that out. Now this is really hot so be careful if you touch it like I am. I'm just trying to smooth it out a little bit because I did it one handed. Not bad. So, could have been a lot worse. Definitely. Well, there we go. So I'm going to turn this off for a moment, do the second one and we'll come back to the finished products. This one was the apple and rhubarb. Okay, so we're all done. This is it. So the only thing left to do is to find a suitable time to drink these. Um, so if, you, if the lighting's any good, the sun keeps coming and going. This is the apple and rhubarb one. So you can see the one-handed one, it was a, it's a bit tatty. Come on. A bit tatty on the bottom. It will still work, but as we can see on the banana one, which I did second, much, much more tidy. Still, if, you can, if you've got access to a heat gun, use that because I think you're going to get a much better finish on these if that will focus up at all try for a blank background see if that helps there we go so not perfect but if you want to give these away as gifts and you're looking uh, for an easy way to do it at home this is the way to do it pretty simple but just be really careful guys um, but yes this this wine has been brewing now for nearly four months so Three months is the minimum, but the longer you leave it, the, the better it's going to get. And I think they look absolutely great. So, have a great day, guys, whatever you're doing. And I'll hopefully see you again soon. And any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section or send me a private message as well. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.